Did you know that knives were one of the first tools discovered by early mankind over two and a half million years ago? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you didn't know that, smack the like button because there's more good stuff on the way, I promise. And no, it's not this Katsu JRF01, which if you've seen if you've seen my rankings, you know that this is utter garbage as far as a knife is concerned but it is my dedicated unboxing knife because let's be honest it's about all it's good for and I don't normally do unboxings I've decided to save unboxings for the special occasions see I'm not going to unbox just anything live on camera for the views I'm just going to do it in special occasions and I'm proud to say that today we have one such special occasion because you see what's in this box is over a couple thousand dollars worth of custom and semi-custom knives probably no most definitely the most valuable knife package i've ever received in the mail and it terrifies me i let's check it out Guys, I'm so excited. This is absolute insanity. I never thought that I'd actually get a chance to check out these specific knives. And before I get started, special shout out to Voodoo Works Garage, also known as Mike from Midgard's Messer USA, who, while he didn't have any prototypes to send me for Midgard since they're about to do a knife show, uh, he said, you know what? You should check out these knives in the meantime. And you know me, if it's sharp and shiny, I want to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and pop his Instagram up on the screen. And also, I'm going to make sure to link Midgard's Messer USA in the description because guess what? They officially have a website that is revved and ready to go. So make sure you check them out as well. Huge shout out to Mike for making this possible. I appreciate you and I'm extremely excited to see these knives in person. So uh, you know me, I'm not good at cutting open boxes on camera. So I'm going to use my little magic trick and we're going to go one, two, and Thank you, Jeeves. That's all for now and pretty much all you're good for. So I know what's in these pouches, but I don't know what's in each pouch. I know that one of these is what Mike considers to be full custom and the other one is what he considers to be semi-custom. And we need to talk about that, but first let's go ahead and pick a pouch to open. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the one that feels heavier. Oh, oh my Lord. This is awesome. Uh, guys, this is the Luther Customs Orphan. Would you look at it? Pure insanity. This is what I would call a Spanish tip cleaver. Whoa. And it's, it's massive. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is not a knife for the faint of heart. Um, and because of the limited nature of these knives, I will actually be pulling the tape and weighing these so that you have the specs because I'm not just going to go online and find, find out. This is what Mike would consider to be a semi-custom. Now, I'm not necessarily sure. I didn't get all the information and maybe I should have. But I'm not sure if this is considered a semi-custom because only some of it is done by hand and some of it's done on a CNC machine. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the, the case because the the uh, frag pattern on the handle scales definitely feels CNC'd. Um, I don't know how you could get that otherwise, so that makes sense. Look at the detail work on this blade. That is insanity. I love that. It's got this notch up here at the top, this cutout rather, that makes me wonder if that's purely for weight saving purposes. Um, 
Wow. I know this is going to be a guillotine, <laughs> but it's surprisingly smooth, actually. I'm not going to trust my finger in the way. Yeah, that's uh, that'll that'll chop off a few digits if you're not careful. I'm blown away. Um, let's talk about the design, shall we? So we have a single sided captive pivot flipper tab, and this is a big old flipper that's sticking out there. And take a look at that pocket clip, my lord. This is the first ever Luther knife that I've ever held in my hand. And I, because I knew this was coming, I did look it up first and foremost, but nothing could prepare me for the sheer magnitude of what this is. Some people might be asking, but why? And to which I can only answer, why not? This is fantastic. Now, here's the deal. You might know that I love big, overbuilt knives. This is one of those. Um, these are not available at the moment. Um, I did look online and I saw that the orphans were going for somewhere, when they were available, they were going in the $1,000 plus range. I'm not entirely sure what the knife steel is. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of at a loss for words. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask myself to put it on the screen. What is the knife steel? Thank you. I know that these scales are titanium. There's no back spacer per se, but there is a bottom spacer. So this open back design is going to be a bit of a weight saving feature. It's also going to allow easy maintenance on the inside of those scales. Now I would have preferred a backspacer because I mean, that's a lot. And I mean a lot of cutting edge that's exposed there, but I can understand why there is no backspacer. Um, this is, this is not a light knife. If you were to wear this with gym shorts, you know, people in your locker room might get a laugh when your pants come down, but you probably wouldn't be too entertained. This is one of those knives that is just, it's impressive. I don't necessarily know what you would use this for. Um, this is obviously a chopper. We're looking at a kind of edge is that is is that yeah that's a flat that's a flat ground edge with these striations milled into the blade right there on that flat then you have this fuller right here that goes into that hole i don't think you could call that a deployment hole but i mean no <laughs> i don't even know why i did that this is fantastic look at this sawtooth jumping up here at the top so that jimping that jimping is not super comfortable on the hand, but that finger choil is perfect for getting a choked up grip. This is one of those knives that if you did use this, and there are people that use $1,000 plus knives as daily carries, uh, if you did use this, I imagine that this would be best suited to be used with gloves. Um, this is absolutely insane. So first things first, because I have to, the most overbuilt knife in my collection is the Thunrar. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the Thunrar, I will go ahead and link it up above in the corner, way up there. Make sure you check that out. Uh, this is much, much longer than the Thunrar by a lot. As far as the carry profile goes, it's pretty dang close. The Thunrar might have it by a little bit, but if we're talking about the thickness on the blade spine, they're they're bang on, man. They are both about a quarter inch thick, half to a quarter inch thick, that's insanity. Uh, they both have this aggressive sawtooth jimping. And that's where we're going to end that comparison because this Luther design, this Luther Orphan is in another league of its own. Uh, these handle scales, these handle scales remind me of, I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, maybe a machete handle. I feel like you could probably take this out into the wilderness if you had to and, you know, chop down some trees. This is definitely a chopper. And with all of this thickness behind the edge, uh, you could definitely do some work on here. What is that blade steel? I know I already posted it on the screen, but I'm wondering what that is. Uh, as far as the edge is concerned, 
you know what that is definitely sharp I'm not going to edge test this one uh, I don't have it in me but man when we look up here at the back we get this attitude adjuster right here and I, I mean that's the only thing that I could call it does it feel good in a reverse grip no not really but why would you reverse grip this knife because it's not really meant for stabbing uh, and I don't care I don't care the the absurdity behind this design makes the inner child in me just giggle this is fantastic I love the way that we have no billboarding on the blade whatsoever given that this is a semi-custom that should be no surprise we do have the Luther uh, the Luther logo here behind the pocket clip and I don't I don't hate it at all I think that's a great implementation of where to put a, uh, a where to put a logo I wish more nice more knife companies would do that looking on the inside here I'm not seeing any cutouts there's no relief there's no weight relieving being done here this is a this is a big honking knife now how much does it weigh so the orphan comes in at 11.29 ounces so it is lighter than my <laughs> it is lighter than my other knives and you could definitely do a little bit of a wrist flick to get this out there as far as the detent the detent is I mean the, the detent does what it can okay the the sheer weight of this blade is going to be enough to overcome just about any detent you put in there the detent is good enough to get a nice solid flip on that blade and also you know hold it in it's not the most strong thing ever but it's also not shaking out so that's a great great sign <laughs> I feel like Sweeney Todd. If Sweeney, if Sweeney Todd had a pocket knife, I'm sure that this is what it would be. It, no, it would not be a straight razor. It would be a Luther Orphan. Wow. Um, the acoustics are not super loud or super obnoxious, uh, but you know what? This knife feels solid. There's no rattle. How about the lockup? Yeah, that's solid. Those are great tolerances. What about the blade centering? I mean, I don't know how you would look at the centering on this, but it looks pretty damn centered to me. The scales don't leave a whole lot of room to be off center. So there's no extra room for this to be off center. The, the centering is perfect. Now let's go ahead and pull the tape. We're looking at just shy of a four inch blade from there. If you want to do it all the way back down here it's more about down to the flipper tab it's about 4.7 inches long overall length we're coming in at about nine and a half if you include the attitude adjuster here on the side wow this is gorgeous okay we're gonna put this up here this next one is the Sean O'Connell mini Persian Wow okay so this one is a full custom um, this is quite obviously a front flipper with the deployment hole beautiful beautiful implementation of this pocket clip perfect centering on the blade yowzas I wow um, okay it's time reverse flick time nope yep there we go <laughs> okay so this is the Sean O'Connell mini Persian this is a full custom by Mike's definition a full custom is something that is a hundred percent handmade uh, you know a one of one no milling machine involved let me know what your definition is by the way what is your definition of full custom versus semi custom put it down in the comments section down below because Mike and I both agreed that it really comes down to uh, your your definition everyone seems to have a different definition these scales Wow they're perfect so something that I was told is that Sean O'Connell has a wait list about two years long and no that's not a exaggeration imagine if you will dropping a 
$1,000, $1,500, $2,000 plus on a knife, and then waiting, not for a month, not for six months, but for two years. Two years you're separated from your cash with nothing to show for it. That's insanity. I'm an enthusiast. I don't know if I could do that. Maybe I'll get to that point, but this is pure insanity. The ergonomics on here are, they're perfect. Um, look at the jimping on the spine of the blade. That's the only place that you could put jimping that has a flat right here. And that flat tells you where to put your hand. That's perfect. This being a full custom, check out the edge bevel. That's no factory bevel. That was done by hand. The tolerances on this knife are perfect. You can tell it's done by hand because a factory bevel doesn't widen as it gets to the top of a belly towards the tip. Um, if, you, if you sharpen knives, you know what I mean. When you have a deep belly and it ends in a tip, uh, your bevel will get wider as it gets to the tip because it gets closer, it gets thicker towards the tip because you get closer to the spine of the blade. I absolutely love the details here. Um, the, I'm assuming that's a hand rubbed finish right here on this flat and I'm gonna try to get a better, a better shot of that. I, wow. <laughs> this is absolutely gorgeous. These ergonomics, by far the best I've ever put in my hand. The pocket clip actually adds to the comfort. I'm gonna say that again. This pocket clip adds to the comfort. When we look on the inside of the scales, we do see some machining, but we're not seeing any cutouts. This knife doesn't need to be weight relieved. Um, I, I would, I'll be honest, I'd be afraid to carry this knife purely even, let's say I had a million dollars. I'd be afraid to carry this knife because even if I lost it and I could afford to replace it, two years is a long time to wait. I love how the barrel spacers here on this open back design match the Anna work on the pocket clip. And I love this oblong deployment hole. Now, I flipped it open. This is obviously a front flipper. Let's go ahead and give it one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, one thing I will say is that the D10 on here is rather light. Um, and, and I don't care. I don't care. Because let me tell you something. When you have a full custom knife, even to the strictest of standards, a full custom, part of the allure is, is that is the tiny things that might not be perfect. And I, I can't stand these fingerprints on here. This, this knife is too beautiful. I'm going to have to wipe those away. Wow. This is, uh, this is something else. I am, I, you know what? I don't think I've ever held a cooler knife on this channel. What's going to be hard is doing my ranking on these knives because being custom or semi-custom it's going to be hard to place a value on something like this. Uh, oftentimes custom knives are made to the spec of the person who orders them from the maker. And so you get a little bit of the person who bought the knife and a lot of the person who made it. And that makes something that goes well beyond anything that's made in a factory or on an assembly line, no matter how good those tolerances and qualities are. I don't care that it says O'Connell here on the flat, um, this is this is in a whole different league, and I'm floored that I actually have the opportunity to not only handle this knife, but also get in depth. Uh, he, before I get too far ahead of myself, it's time to go over some specs. So the weight. How much does this weigh? Comes in at 4.41 ounces. Now let's go ahead and pull the tape. 
Gosh, that's cool. That action is smooth. So from tip to butt, like you always should, uh, it's going to come in right at about seven and a half inches. Uh, the blade is going to be right there at three and a quarter. That's fantastic. It's hard for me to care about the specs on this knife when I'm just in the process of taking it in. This is something that is not what I'm used to. Production knives got me into the hobby. Knives like this are keeping me there. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling the allure of a custom knife and it makes me want one. To think that someone did this entirely by hand is incredible. That is, that's incredible. These are just my first impressions, and I know that normally I have my thoughts together a lot better than I do at this moment. Um, but I wanted to take a minute to share this experience with you. I did not open these up beforehand. Uh, I, when I showed them to you on camera is the, the first time that I've seen these, and I'm blown away. They're both elegant for different reasons. And you feel the passion of the people behind each knife when you hold it. When you get to this point, a knife, at least for me, becomes more than just a tool. It's like holding someone's soul in your hands. You're getting all the experience, all the happiness, laughter, all the pain and the heartache, everything that went into making these designers people, they transferred into works of art that are also functional. Oftentimes, um, oftentimes it's easy for us to, to forget that and to look at these things and say, I can't believe that with those materials that it would cost X amount of dollars, I can go to Walmart. You can't go to Walmart and buy this knife. You can't go on Blade HQ and order you a Sean O'Connell. This is, this is incredible to me. And it's not like anything I've ever held in my hand. Neither of these knives are. These are absolutely fantastic. And I cannot wait to do my grail or garbage videos on these. Um, I will not, I will not be uh, carelessly carrying these, but I will be handling these a lot. I will be going over these with a fine tooth comb. I will be handling them responsibly and I'll be doing my research, answering for you the tough questions. Because when it comes to somewhere in the realm of $3,000 worth of knives, that's the only kind of questions that I have. Guys, that's all I got for you today. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you want to see more of this Sean O'Connell mini Persian and this Luther Orphan, make sure you hit subscribe. I'll see you on the flip side.